Hello there and welcome to the Mobile Academy and if you want to become a job ready Flutter developer make sure to check out the courses on my website mobileacademy.io here you will find all of the courses related to the Flutter development you will find the professional course as well as the basic course related to the Flutter you can also find some of the uh, free courses over here if you want to just go and try it out or if you are just a beginner on the Flutter and then the React Native you can also find the free course over here and if you would like to be a full stack developer we also have the course related to the full stack developer related to the uh, node.js express mongodb as well as the flutter over here and if you would like to join the uh, flutter bootcamp there is also a bootcamp course over here so make sure to go and check out the course over here there are free and then they paid codes and if you want to be a job ready flutter developer this is the course that you would want to take so see you guys on the next lesson till then have a great day let us continue with our lesson over here and in this particular lesson let us go and set up our flutter secure storage over here because we need to store the um like the authentication token as well as the refresh token for our user so once the user authenticate to the api we want to store securely that particular access token as well as the refresh token so in that case we will be using a flutter secure storage over here let's copy this uh the dependency over here and let's go to the pub spec.yaml file and let's go and add it over here and let's also add the documentation link over here as well and let's just go and run the uh, flutter uh, pub get over here to get that particular dependency and make sure to go and read this particular documentation over here right so uh, i'm going to add it and i'm going to use it directly in my application i'm not going to go and explain about the flutter secure storage about and you should be a little familiar uh, about uh, how to read the documentation and uh, how to make use and how to get understand because this is not course related to the flutter, flutter secure storage right so we are not going to go and extensively cover all of those topics over here make sure to go and read the documentation that is your homework and uh, we will go back to our application once we have added over here and let's go to the uh, core over here and in the core i'll just go and add the uh, new folder now just call this one as the uh, data and in the data we will have the uh, local and then we'll have the remote uh, let's add the okay so let's just add the local for now and the remote will be on the later stage and first of all i'll just go and add in the local we will have um, some more let's have the secure and that will be of the stora secure storage and in this particular secure storage let's just go and create our uh, the files and first one will be of the uh, flutter uh, secure stor storage and that will be of the provider we need to create the provider itself right let's just go and create that particular file let's uh, make use of the provider snippets over here and we'll say the flutter secure storage provider and provider we need to import the flutter river pod over here and this is going to provide us the flutter uh, secure i guess flutter secure storage over here so let's just go and import that one as well and from here we need to return the flutter secure storage and this we need to provide the android option and also i'll just go and auto complete it from the um, the ai tool over here and uh, then i guess uh, let's just go and try to see how it works over here first uh, we can just extract this android option over here and, I, and let's just go and create the const i guess and that will be of the uh, android option let's say the uh, android uh, a n and d r o i d options and this will be of equals to the now uh, let's just go and paste the value that we just copied and uh i'll just okay that should be fine i guess so 
encrypted set preference which will uh, set it as a true um, you can go and read the documentation about that one why we are using that one uh, and then in the ios option we also require that one so let's just go and say the one more which is a const and then this will be of the ios options over here right o p t o n s options and this will be of the ios i guess options over here and uh, then we will be set we will set the accessibility option i guess that will be of the keychain um accessibility first unlock first unlock i guess we have the first unlock i guess that should be the one that we need and we will just go and pass this option over here the android option will be of this one and this will be of the ios option will be of this one and uh we will set this one as the const i guess that should be fine okay and now uh, you need to go and read the documentation over here so what does this does right and all of those and also let's go and read all of this configuration so minimum sdk should be of the 18 as well and for that let's just go and check our the android build over here and in the android build let's go to the minimum uh, min sdk i'll just go and uh, manually set it as the 25 for now that is what we will require over here and uh i guess that should be the one and mac os we don't have so let's just go and see if we have any configuration left on the ios side over here okay so i guess there is nothing much left make sure to go and read this particular uh documentation over here and now uh, we have the configuration for the flutter uh secure storage that is going to provide us the flutter secure storage provider and let's go and create the um i guess we'll require some const variable so for that let's go and create the new uh file over here and let's just call this one as the uh secure stor storage and that will be of the the const and c okay so it should be of the unsd const dot the dot file let's create some and that will be a const of the type will be of the string and this will be of the access uh token key so we will store the access token key over here and then we also require the refresh token key so currently we are just going to store the access token and then the refresh token and once we have the key let's create the uh, interface over here because we'll be creating a class so i'll create a pure interface over here that will be of the um let's just call this one as the uh, i secure s-e-c-u-r-e secure storage dot the dot file and this will be of the abstract right abstract interface class which will be of the pure interface that we want and i'll just call this one as the uh, secure i secure storage that would be good and here i'll create the um, the three methods over here that will be of the read write and then the delete so in the read we just need to pass in the key that we want to read right and this can return us the null value so i'll just go and say the once we read it can if the key is not present so it's going to return us the null value so i'll just say the future of the type is of the string over here and we also have the write option we need to provide the key and then the value to write and now uh, it's not going to return us anything so i'll just say this is of the void type another one is to delete and to delete it doesn't return anything so we'll just go and say delete and provide the key over here so now once we have the interface over here next thing is that we need to implement this particular uh the interface that we have set up so let's just go and create the new file over here and i'll just go and call this one as the secure store uh, secure sto or secure storage dot the dot file over here 
let's just create the uh, final class so I'll just create a final class because I don't want anyone to extend from this and implement it so let's just go and uh, call this one as the uh, a secure storage over here and this is going to implement our interface not the import I am B L E M B implements the I secure storage interface that we have just created over here. Okay, so it's uh, let me import that one. So let's just go and implement um, override all of the three uh, method that we have over here. And uh, let's just go and remove all of these for now. Let's just clear it out and the first one is the delete so we want to delete the uh, key so i'll just make use of the i guess i'll make use of the try cast block so in case there is some error so i want to cast that one as well and here let's just go and say the this should be of the asynchronous right we want to uh, await over here so first thing that i want to do is await and I need a Flutter secure storage over here. So final, that will be of the uh, Flutter uh, secure storage that we need. And I'll just call this one as the secure storage. And in the uh, constructor, I will take it as a dependency over here. So this constructor, uh, the secure storage now depends on the Flutter secure storage and we have now dependency. So later we will uh, inject the dependency with the uh, Flutter River pod using the provider itself. And now I can just go and call the uh, secure storage dot and I can just go and delete and provide the key over here. That should be good enough. And uh, here I can just go and throw some error for now and um, or I can okay so I can just make use of the retrow over here uh, for now I'm just going to retrow but later we'll come back and uh, see how we can handle the error effectively over here so once we have this and let's go down over here the next will be of the try catch here we are going to read and it's going to uh, await this one so we don't want to directly return uh, we let's just go and await the value and for that one, I need to make this one as the uh, asynchronous call over here. Uh, I'll wait and then read that particular value and return that particular value from here. Similarly, I need to just go and make use of the try cast block over here. That is to secure stories dot the right. And this one should also be asynchronous call. And we need to await. Await and that's not going to return us anything. So let's just go and remove the return from here and okay so we got that one so now we have all of the uh, the function implemented to um, to write our access token and refresh token to our flutter secure storage so we have option to delete read as well as the write over here and now what we need to do is we need to create the uh, provider over here so let's make use of the provider code snippet and this will be of uh, it's going to provide us the secure storage over here not the flutter secure storage uh, but just just a secure storage over here and then we need to import the uh, flutter river pod over here so let's just go and import the flutter river pod and the type over here is the i secure storage over here not the concrete class of the secure storage over here so let's just go and provide this over here and now we require one dependency so now we need to inject that particular dependency so this is a dependency injection and if you have already learned about the flutter river pod in my previous lessons then you should be a little familiar about the dependency injection with the flutter river pod over here so i'll just go and create the final and i'll just call this one as the secure storage and i just need to go and call the ref dot the watch over here and we have the uh, flutter secure storage uh, flutter secure storage provider over here and now i can just go and provide that particular dependency over here then we are good to go 
and the another thing that we need to note over here is this particular provider is providing the interface which is of the abstraction or the abstract class not the concrete class so you need to make sure uh, that you provide the interface over here as a, the type for this particular provider not the concrete class over here because the secure storage is of the concrete class over here if you are not familiar of the solid principle make sure to go and check out my course on the solid principle then you will understand this particular concept much more clearly over here because once you are using the clean architecture we will be following the solid principle more extensively over here and uh, i just want to give you some high level overview over here we are following the the last principle of the solid which is of the dependency inversion over here that we don't want to de uh, we don't want to depend on the concrete class right it says that the high level module should not depend on the lower level of the module that quite that's the quite complicated definition but basically what we want to do is we want to always provide the type as the interface over here right the the depend type is of the is providing the the interface so later what you can do is we can easily swipe it's, it's more flexible like later you want to um from this particular provider you want to provide a different uh the the concrete class let's say uh xyz storage or the uh, hive storage that also extends from the i secure storage that you can easily swipe and also in the test cases if you want to swipe with the fake or the mock class it will be much more easier uh, than just directly making use of the concrete class over here that's the high level overview and uh, make sure to go and um, read more about the solid principle that's what we are going to follow the the benefit of using the um the dependency invers inversion principle over here is the flexibility it is much more uh, flexible in changing and replacing this particular the storage class as well as the testability we can like we can easily test this particular class because it's much more replaceable it's not like um the um, the hard coded or something like it's a fixed over here right it's much more flexible over here and it's much more de decoupled system than directly instead of providing this uh, as a concrete class it's more depend on this particular class but if i provide the interface over here it doesn't depend uh, it doesn't directly depend on that particular class right so if i provide the uh, i over here right it doesn't depend directly now to this particular it's not it's much more maintainable right it's much more testable and it's much more flexible that's the main use case of the clean architecture over here hope you got the point and if you want to learn uh, more about the clean architecture make sure to go and check out my course regarding the clean architecture in my website uh, the um, where you will learn much more stuff regarding the clean architecture so that's all for this particular lesson i guess and uh, we have this particular ready next is that we need to go and work with our uh, the network connection uh, basically using the do and i'll give you some homework to go and read some documentation regarding the do as well as about the flutter secure storage that we just make use of basically the concept that we have used over here so why we are using this one and why we have this one what are the options that you can set up and all of this stuff you need to understand yourself I, i'm not going to go and teach you each and every concept over here so that's all for this particular lesson and uh, let's meet up in the next one till then have a great day